guys are a local favorite. They bring down the house at a monthly show that is a improvised PowerPoint presentation. <laughs> but tonight, for the very first time, they are going to make it into a musical version. And I don't know what that looks like, so you can be in as well as I. So give it up for Speechless! <laughs> Super fun, uh, but today we're doing it with a little bit of a twist. We're going to be doing speeches like the musical.
performance at Speechless. Speechless is the company that uh, puts this show up. We also do workshops, improv workshops. We teach people to be better public speakers, communicators, work with companies, individuals, all of those fun things. We'll talk more about that. But first, let's meet our presenters. Let's give it up for Lori.
I speak for everyone in between. And I gotta tell you that there is one thing going on right now that we, as a community, need to address. <laughs> now, some of you know that vanity is a sin. Some of you know that there are rules to how you go to the bathroom, to how you wash the dishes, to how you make your bed. But some people forget that what you eat is as important as how you look, as what you do in the bathroom, as what you do as you're walking out on the street each day. So let us never forget that vanity is not the gravest of sins. It is merely a sin among sinners. <laughs> now you may laugh it off.
now you guys know how it goes. Should we get another person up here? Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise for your next presenter. It is going to, not just not going to be Frack. It is going to be Eric Rubin. Let's get oh, Eric Rubin. Oh, thank you. Oh, wow. How oh, are you, Eric? So much better now. Come on out here. It's warm here. I want you to be here with me. Eric, now, you have done speechless before. I have done speechless before. Yeah, and this is how many times have you done a, a song with Speechless? Never. Never. Never a clock. Never a clock. Great. Uh, Eric, tell us a little bit about yourself. What do you do when you're not singing presentations? I pretty much just wait for you to call me. That's right. <laughs> I use the guy on my phone. No, I'm a youth trainer, and I do shows in libraries around, around the city, around the city. <laughs> Do they want you there, or are you just showing up? <laughs> Most of the time, I'm just there waiting for you to call me. <laughs> you got your are as good a place as any. As a, great. Awesome. Uh, look at the choices we have left. Is there anything that you do not want to do? Oh, okay. And I want you guys to know this is completely random. Audience choice. You if don't I, want to do audience choice. Because I have trust issues. <laughs> yeah, right. They're yeah. a very friendly audience. I want you to know that. I want you to spin that wheel, Mr. Ruben. <laughs> Anyways, you remember that time about six years ago 
we were stealing gum from Mr. Willowberry? You remember. And he turned to you and he said, So there's lots of, lots of containers <laughs> that you can try to hold life in. But sometimes you still fall down. <laughs> now sit down and listen on the sad I want to tell you a story about President Taft. I'm <laughs> sure he's the president right now. <laughs> I didn't read much in school. <laughs> now I want to see why you're feeling low. And I want to see if we can push this round extra slow. Now hold me, hold me close. Because I've got something to tell you. I don't want you to fall in the water. Oh, I just want you to listen to me for a little. There's a way. The river's gonna split in two, and I just need the things I gotta do. And you can't be there. No, it's not about me. It's actually about you. <laughs> the last year of our lives that we spent together. <laughs> the thick, the thin, and... Real, real.
started a little country. I was a little concerned. <laughs> and then he power balanced and threw it. Great. Hey, Jake. Awesome. Yes. You know, because that person was such a trooper. Yes. I I don't just want to want to cohabitate. Now that it's legal, 
you know what? There was a guy here earlier who was just sitting around in the library scaring the kids. You could go in and rap with him. We can scare kids. <laughs> scare kids. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Perfect. So you are going to either get a eulogy or a public apology. Damn, sorry. No. Nah. <laughs> um, you are going to sing. I'll talk about YouTube later. Um, great. You're going to be eulogizing. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, sad occasion. Frack is here to talk to us through the death of the Statue of Liberty. Give it up for Frack! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, gender non-conforming folks, <laughs> can we bow our heads? Thank you for coming to this funeral. I hope you guys had the rinse and funions at the front of the lobby. <laughs> Today, we do you look the eyes. <laughs> A very important woman. Someone who was born in Italy, I think. <laughs> France. France. <laughs> Born in France. Shipped over, part by part. But that woman became a woman when she entered the United States of America. For this and Googly, <laughs> I'd like to take us down a memory lane, century by century, some of the great moments that we had with her. And how are we going to do that? With bars. So first, 1776. It's a date I would never miss. Every time that I felt it, it was never hesitant. I wanted her to be my present. But then it came, and it was never another. All of a sudden, I met her, Eeyore's brother. <laughs> With her glasses on, she was the mastodon. And then she told me about this cattle prod that was shipped over all the way on a boat. All the way here, she came on a float. Her name was the Statue of Liberty. For us, we would love her to infinity. We would love her like, are you fucking kidding me? We would love her all the way to infinity. This shit would be elemental P, like elementary. Every time I felt it like then I keep. Jackass, a donkey on the scene. They paint us in a bad picture, but the Statue of Liberty, I had to get with her. So the 1800s, she was a boxer. She took everyone and she would straight block her. She was the one born in fucking Italy. What's her name? <laughs> the Statue of Liberty. <laughs> she was born in France. Me and the Statue of Liberty, we had a romance. Um, and you know that a pillar but hear his footage. Donald Trump killed her. Uh, Donald Trump is the murderer. Uh, Donald Trump is the burglar. Uh, before Donald Trump, America was perfect. <laughs> now she's worthless. Every time I'm looking in her eyes, she started dying at the Native American genocide. Uh, back to the fucking ABCs. Cause then she started dying more during slavery And after slavery, she started dying again But you will never live like a sin, uh You'll never live like a sin, we'll praise you again And you were so fucking tall like Huckleberry Finn, uh <laughs> 1900s <laughs> You always stayed blunted And you know that I was failing you an alien You had vegan protecting your genitalia <laughs> The Statue of Liberty men always gave me them looks with them curvaceous ass so spacious. Standing in New 
York with that body so bodacious, though. I miss that fucking statue. You were so fucking nuts like cashews. I can talk about you and me. Scott's liberty, this is the eulogy. Between you and me, between you and me. The Statue of Liberty, this is the eulogy. Uh, you used to stand for the unity. But after that, this was your fucking eulogy. Uh. <laughs> now the modern day, the 21st century. And you know that I got babies. <laughs> the Statue of Liberty was killed by a baby. Uh, and I'm off to jump and know this fucking baby's name. It is Donald Trump. <laughs> I feel like I'm the man. You can tell it's Trump by his fucking tiny head. <laughs> Trump supporters. The Statue of Liberty, she tried to jump the border. She said, hey, Mexico, you can come with me. But then Trump found her, shot him down with radar beams. Uh,